So it's been a while since I've made a controller competitive Fortnite guide. So in today's video, I'm going to be updating that previous video and going over what are some of the best things to do in order to improve at playing controller competitively in 2021 and 2022. So if you guys are interested in supporting me, consider using code SUNNOTIYT in the item shop. It helps me out a lot, but I'm not going to waste any more of your guys' time. Let's hop into this video. So the first section I'm going to be going over is the settings that all controller players should be taking into consideration. Especially when you're starting out as a competitive controller player. The first setting that I'm going to be going over is the aim assist type. Obviously right now there's two primary aim assist types. There's linear and there's exponential. Now I can give you a handful of pros that use both linear and exponential. For example, one of the biggest linear pros in the world is Day. And then one of the biggest exponential pros in the world is Reet. Both of these players are extremely successful but they both use linear and expo for different reasons. If you're starting off as a controller player trying to pick what aim assist you want to start with, I'd recommend linear every single time. Linear is just better in the modern day. The aim assist is nicer, the mechanics are smoother, pretty much everything about linear is better. However, if you've been using exponential for quite some time, I'd recommend that you stay on that input and you do not switch whatsoever. Obviously, most of this stuff can be boiled down to preference, but linear and exponential aim assist is one of the biggest settings that controller players need to consider. Another setting that's really important for controller players is the sensitivity settings. If you guys haven't watched my sensitivity video, you can check that out in the top right corner, but I'd recommend that you guys mess around with the sensitivity as much as possible until you find the perfect normal sensitivity, building and editing sensitivity, and ADS sensitivity for your controller. This is what's going to make your aim extremely good and compare you to those keyboard and mouse players that also have good aim. You don't really need to spend that much time finding your correct sensitivity, just follow the steps in my video once again, or just mess around with your sensitivity until you find the correct one. Most of the settings that I'm going over in this video are going to be preference and sensitivity is no different. And then for the last setting that I recommend that you guys mess around with, it's going to be the keybinds. You need to make sure that you have optimal controller keybinds. Either you need to be playing optimized keybinds on a normal controller, you need to be playing claw, or using at least one or two paddles. You need to make sure that you're doing one of these three things because you cannot be playing controller with unoptimized keybinds, not playing claw, and not using paddles in 2021 or in 2022. That's not going to help you at all. If anything, that's actually going to limit your performance to a lower level than you want it to be. So once again, either optimize your keybind, start playing claw, or buy some paddles for your controller. Now moving on to the next section, I'm going to be going over what to practice and what to play as a controller player. This is going to be really big going into the next competitive game mode, which is duos. You guys are going to want to try to rise up to that occasion and definitely try and pop off in all of these game modes. And in order to do that, I'd recommend that you guys practice these things that I'm going over now. So I'd recommend that you guys play as much Zone Wars in Arena as possible. Now the reason that I'm saying you guys play a lot of Zone Wars is because Zone Wars is one of the best ways for controller players specifically to improve their fighting. You guys may have noticed that a lot of these controller gods have definitely come from Zone Wars. Day and Miro literally came from these drafts and wager servers that used to exist. That's where their Fortnite competitive careers were basically born. And in 2022, the steps are going to be no different. You guys should pretty much do the exact same thing if you're a controller player and just grind Zone Wars and play as much Arena as possible. Zone Wars is going to help your mechanics and overall zone awareness, and Arena is going to help your in-game fighting and help you get used to the map and places around it. You can also do stuff in creative such as realistic PvP, maybe even just realistic 1v1s or 2v2s. That stuff's going to help you out a lot, especially because duos is coming up. But as long as you guys practice some game mode in creative or in game, which involves you fighting, that's going to help you out a lot. There's a reason that most controller players seem to be very aggressive. It's because they either fight in their creative game modes or they play arena with the intent of W keying. That's how most of these controller players are getting good at fighting. I'd recommend you guys try to join stuff like draft cords where you can find other people to play zone wars and arena with. It's going to help you out a lot with your fighting and overall mechanical skill in Fortnite. These are just a few of the things that I would consider if you guys are trying to practice effectively on controller. Now going over some other things that I'd recommend you guys practice, I'd go over three specific topics. First off, I'd obviously recommend that you guys try to aim train at least once a day using Skavix aim trainer in game. Now aim training is one really big thing that a lot of controller players overlook. A bunch of you guys may think, hey, I'm controller, I have aim assist, I don't need to aim train. This is not true whatsoever. I'd recommend 100% of the time that you guys try to aim train at least once a day. This is going to make your aim better than a lot of the people that you're playing with, and it's going to make you have the best aim amongst people who already have the best aim in a sense. 
Skavix is just one of the best aim trainers that I would recommend to you, and the code for that map is definitely going to be in the description. Now the next alternate thing that I'd recommend that you guys practice is your movement. You can do this inside of movement courses such as Coach Jazz's movement course in order to improve it. If you're able to do this daily, it's going to improve a lot of stuff about your controller gameplay. As you guys know, controller players do have 360 degree movement, but a lot of them aren't utilizing it to their fullest potential. What a bunch of pros like Illis and Furious are going to do, they're going to be practicing using this map at least once a day. And while they're doing this map, it's going to prove their reaction time, their movement, their awareness. Pretty much everything is going to be improved by this map and there's no negatives to doing it. So please try to hop onto this map at least once a day. The code is going to be in the description and I'd argue it is one of the most useful maps. It is known as Coach Jazz's Movement Course. I, along with a bunch of other professional Fortnite players, use this. And then the last alternate thing that I'd recommend that you guys practice to improve at your controller gameplay is going to be your crosshair placement. As you guys know, I recently did go over a crosshair placement map in one of my previous videos. I'd recommend that you guys use that exact map to improve your crosshair placement. If you're able to do this daily, it's going to improve your editing, it's going to improve your editing speed, your building, pretty much everything in terms of mechanical skill. It'll also improve your aim because those micro adjustments will be a lot easier to make. You're going to get more used to your dead zones and a bunch of your edits are going to be more fluid. It's going to make your editing and tarping and endgame much better. Once again, there's no downsides to using this map whatsoever, and I'd recommend that you add these three maps into your training routine every single day. You can warm up with them, cool down with them, or use them in the middle of your training sessions, but there are no excuses to not use any of these maps. I'd recommend you guys use all of them. Now, the final section I want to get into is how you get smarter and get better at competing in actual competitive Fortnite. Obviously, that's what my channel is about, and this is one of the most important parts of this video. I'd recommend that you guys try to VOD review IGLs in good solo players in order to understand how they look at the outlook of the game. And the IGLs don't need to just be controller. VOD review people like Scented, VOD review people like Booga. Try to VOD review people like Tayson and people who understand the game very well. If you do this, you can understand their thought process behind rotating and understanding the overall layer and structure of a game, and then you can get smarter in return. If you couple this in-depth study with your fighting ability, you're going to pop off and get the best of both worlds. Without a doubt, if you VOD review IGLs and good solo players, you're also going to improve in your own sense. Not only are you going to be improving in solo game modes, but you can also lead a trio if you get to that level. There's a bunch of famous controller IGLs such as Colazzo, and you can learn from IGLs like him exactly how a controller player can functionally IGL a trio or a duo. And with duos being the next Fortnite game mode that's coming up, you guys need to know how to lead the duo just in case your duo does not know how to do that. But overall, if you guys follow all four of these primary overlying tips, you guys should be improving a controller a lot during the 2021-2022 competitive season. Season. Anyways guys that is the video on exactly how to prove on controller in 2021 and 2022 If you guys did enjoy please consider dropping a like and subscribing to the channel down below This video did take me a fair amount of time So I'd recommend that you guys use code Sonata YT in order to support me and what I do here on YouTube Thank you guys so much for the support recently I'm so happy that you guys are keeping up with me as my upload schedule is getting a bit scuffed But that's about it for this video guys Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel and I will see you all in the next video Bye guys